come we? It's a bit chilly. Just been outside to get some kit. <laughs> Who's on there this morning ready for a little bit of a workout? We're doing a half an hour workout this morning. Doing a half an hour workout this morning with some really simple exercises. I'm Natasha. Uh, I'm just going to wait another minute and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit more. I have a screen here I'm viewing on my laptop, um, on my tablet, sorry, that you can message me. So um, if you message me and let me know if you can hear me and see me clearly, that will be really useful. That helps me a little bit, see if I can get some uh, comments on the screen. So this is the Babby Active page for this morning session. And um, we've all been working out at home, haven't we? We've all been viewing um, free, fabulous online fitness activities and probably Hope you're doing okay, joining the workout this morning. Well done, Sam, brilliant. So can you see and hear me okay as well, Sam? I'm going to stand over here, look. You should be able to see and hear me as well. Hi, Charlotte. Morning, Charlotte. So we're going to take it nice and easy this morning. We've got a whole different kind of setup with working with people I can't see. <laughs> people I can't see. So when I get over there on the floor later, you should be able to see me, yeah? Oh, that's better. So we're bang on time now. It's um, 10. 30. So I'm going to start, I'm going to introduce myself for those who are on. Okay, so good morning. I'm Natasha. I'm pleased to meet you. Um, I'm going to be delivering little short sessions here for you today uh, and coming ahead. Um, so just a little bit about me. I'm a mum of two. Um, my eldest is now 13 and my daughter is eight. Um, I had my first baby 2007 and that was by emergency C-section. Um, and then I had my, yeah, my second in 2012. <laughs> um, and I had everything but the C-section. So I understand fully the implications of um, having a baby and the scenarios uh, that um, ask our bodies to do some favors for us effectively. So um, I have a, a diastasis recti, a fully functional uh, gap um, on my linear alba. Um, so I'm experienced in dealing with that and can help other people when they're not sure about how their body is healing. I'm not going to discuss that in this session. Um, I may mention uh, ways of managing it as we go along that might, some of you might find useful. Um, if you can just, uh, hi Jeanette, if you can just give me a little wave and tell me your name or, I, yeah, your, I, actually it tells me your name, doesn't it? If you can just give me a little wave and um, tell me what kind of workouts you've been doing lately, that would be good as well, what your fitness level's like. If you could put beginner, comment beginner um, and how old your baby is, things like that if you want to. Um, the workout space is set up, I don't have my children with me. Um, but your children may be around, so safety first, so manage your space safe, safely, of course. Um, today's equipment wise, um, you'll need um, a belt. I, this is a piece of rope. I'm going to be using that today for those who want to do some movement with uh, an assist. Gives you a little bit of, um, a little bit of traction there into the muscle. 
Um, so that's good. I've got uh, a cushion which I'm going to demo in, the, in our half an hour chat afterwards. So I'm going to log off at the end of this uh, half an hour and then I'm going to come back on into the private group so you can ask questions in that one. So it might take me a few minutes to get back in there, but if you have got any questions, then by all means come over to there. Um, and I'm going to do some demonstration um, about abdominal control um, and breathing control. So I'll be using a cushion for that. Um, you might have a ball handy. So any ball, if you're a mum of... Yeah, boys or Lily, any kid, probably got a ball. So any ball will do. The leather ones are a bit hard, but they're gonna end up being used at some point over the next few weeks um, for, for throwing, all sorts of exercises. Uh, I think that's it for today. I think that's it, so we're, we're gonna go. My little one is 10 months, Charlotte, yeah. Brilliant. Well done, Charlotte, putting that information in. Okay, so have a drink ready. We'll do a, just a little short warm up and then we're gonna just go through some exercises. Today's aim is to just give you some simple movements um, to reintroduce simple movement patterns into your body. So all beginners suitable. Uh, uh, increase your body awareness. Thank you, Jody. So she's doing some out, doesn't, but don't do workouts, new to me, eight months old, okay. Thank you for that information. So um, increasing your body awareness, so uh, helping you to, to listen to your third ear and really become uh, familiar with um, how your body's moving and for you to be the best judge of what you need in terms of exercising, particularly because everything's online um, and we're not able to monitor you face to face. So it's really key to avoid injury uh, by people um, asking trainers questions and then we can guide you through that and if anything doesn't feel right then you can message me afterwards and then we can also go over that at all that little chat at the end would work as well um so giving you the um ability to exercise safely and effectively and enjoy your workouts listening into your third ear and introducing some simple movement patterns uh having a bit of fun got a very straightforward circuit to do uh, i think that's it i think we're ready to go i've made some more notes here as well let's go So the music's on very low, but you can by all means put music on in your background as well if you like it. All right, so let's just have a little warm up. I'm just gonna go over there. This is old, so I hope you can hear me over here. Yeah? All right, start off with a bit of a warm up. Just bring yourself into a nice standing position. Reach up, take your arms down and round. Squat. And this workout, is designed for postnatal women six weeks after a vaginal delivery or 12 weeks after a cesarean if you're pregnant I'm going to give you a couple of options for those who are in their third trimester but really we're focusing on the postnatal client in these sessions. So this is me, hips bending. And I'm looking at my hands here, turn my hands around, stretch out behind you. I've just been outside to get some equipment and it's really cold out there so I'm still quite numb. Nice easy squats, just two more. Weight is going into the heels, push the hips forward to engage through the buttocks, lovely. Just lift the knee, lift the knee. Don't worry too much about your arms. This is a light, easy warm up. Don't need any equipment for the warm up. Just see if you can lift your knee up without bringing your body down towards your knee. So just focus on lifting up through the spine. Just bringing your knees up to where you feel natural in this hip flexion, just natural. Yeah. Well, opposite arm. The intention is in the hands here to push through the hands behind you. Activate the triceps here. Big smiles. Easy peasy. And relax there. Take your hands and bring them up and then palms down. I'm going to come onto my knees so you can see my hands. Stay on your feet for me. I've got a lampshade above my head. Stretch your palms up and just notice if you're drawing your shoulders up towards your ears or if your shoulders are staying down. So you've got those lovely flat bones, some scapular bones. See if you can keep them down. 
That's it, two more. Stretch through the fingertips really long, as if you had rays of light shining out the tips of each finger. Or a rainbow. You're making a rainbow above your head. Last one. All right, fabulous. Back to squats. Push the hips forward. Push your hips forward. So we're not locking out any of our joints. But I'm using a little kind of hip thrust at the top. If you can, keep going. I want you to see if you can lift up your big toe for me. Just see if you can do that. That will ground you into your heels. That's it. Excellent. Nice and easy. Let's move a little bit on the spot. Move a little bit on the spot. So I'm checking out your space around you. See if you've got enough room to move your arms around without touching anything. And the other thing we're going to do later on is when we do get onto the floor, is we're going to just see if we can lie down without kicking any furniture. <laughs> or kicking any children. We'll see how we go. <laughs> Hope you're feeling good this morning. Let's take these as nice and steady as you like. Try the arms. I'm just going to clap my arms overhead. All right. exaggerated to give you the motivation to move in a bigger shape what you need from the movements in terms of width and depth all right all right settling down there coming onto all toes can you come up up and down up and down So I'm just coming up onto my toes. I'm gonna rock back, activate the triceps. I hope you're feeling a bit warmer. Two more. Reach up high, keep your shoulder blades down for me. Did I do an extra one? All right, lunges. So mini lunges forward, just a little lunge, that's all you need. So strike with the heel. Strike with the heel and you'll feel these muscles activate. You can put your hands here. So we're really activating in here. It's a very functional movement, the lunge. Nice. So for those of you who want to go a bit further, a bit deeper, you start to feel a bit more warmed up, go deeper. All right, go deeper if that's your game. Lovely. Two more, each leg. And relax and have a little bit of a march. All right, we're going to go round in a really simple circuit. And some exercises are going to be timed. How are you feeling? Feeling okay? Stop whenever you need to catch your breath. A little bit of mobility on the hands and ankles. I'll come down and talk to you from this view and then go back up. So what we're going to do is I want to tell you that we've got a press up in this move, uh, in this circuit this morning, but it's on a wall. And as you can see, I don't have a wall. So I'm going to ask you to go for a minute of your level of press up. So I would suggest today, just for a bit of fun, counting how many you can do in a minute. So if I start a minute on the clock and I say go, 
I want you to count how many press ups you can do in a minute and then make a note of it in your notepad or text yourself <laughs> or just can you remember a number about all the other things you're remembering remembering yeah. so what I'm going to do is give you a minute of a press up at the wall so you press up hands you know you press up hands they're coming in line with your chest aren't they there you're going to step back from the wall you're going to lean forward into the wall and then you're going to push off okay are you ready to do a minute? If you're already on the floor and you know your press up levels, there's no reason why you can't do those press up levels. Probably you're already moving in it. I don't want to spend too much time demoing because I know where you're at already. So if you're going into a box, you're probably, you're probably here, aren't you? Yeah? So try and keep this, your nice long spine, knees under the hips. Press yourself forward. The hips are going to come forward and roll your shoulders back. These arms are wide because we're not doing a tricep press up, like a push up. Yeah? And then in a postnatal stage, that's probably where you're going to be. Anyone who's doing a full press-up already knows what they're doing in a full press-up. Are you ready? You're going to do a minute. I'm going to keep giving you some cues. Four, three, two, give me a minute. Counting as you go. Focusing on what you're doing, exhaling with the effort. Present your chest forward. Lift your head and chest. Concentrating on your work. Halfway's just gone. So I'll do a few. I'm gonna do 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. You stopped? Heart rate up. Did you remember a number? <laughs> Comment the number below. Comment the number below. <laughs> Rotate the wrists. You're doing fantastic. I'm going to try and do that in every session, um, or every session whilst we're doing these sessions. So I want to see if you can build up your strength on that. And we can talk about how we do that in our chats after. All right, so text that number in the box. All right, so let's do squat throw. So let's talk about the pelvic floor. Now, if you've got a ball or a cushion, what have you got? Have you got a sandbag? What have you got? So with a squat throw, I want you to think about your pelvic floor. So what I want you to do is just get some awareness that you know that you have control at the front, like the urethra, and then you have some control upwards and inwards, and then you have some control at the back. And as we're going to squat and throw, I want you to see if you can feel the muscles working with you as you exhale on this one. So, should we just do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, you can throw it higher if you've got better ceiling height than me. I think that's one. Okay, 10 of those. Squat throws. Let's have a look at your lunges. I'm going to keep hold of my sandbag, but you can hold your ball with you. Some of you might even have a heavier kit for those of you already training. So this one, so if you're pregnant, you're going to need an assist, aren't you? You're going to need some, maybe leaning up against the fireplace or the back end of the sofa. And your stride is very short. But there's then a bend in the knee, okay? That's on your, your ready stage. For those who are steady, they're going to go without support. We we'll do a minute on this one, okay? It's just a short circuit today. And for those of you who are ready to do a little bit more, so Sam, so you're well progressed out of your uh, mum stage of your little one. Maybe how old your little one now, Sam? I'm not sure. About three. So should we do a minute? Forgive me for looking at my watch. So this is for people on the go. They can come here. This is only for people who are 
advanced in their postnatal stage. So I wouldn't give this exercise to anybody six, whose baby's less than six months, unless they were previously athletic. Okay, previously athletic. My daughter's just come into the room. She's around the back. So if you're really active, push. So I'm gonna come down a level now. So I'm gonna go to the steady levels to join in with you. So this is 20 seconds, so you're probably here. This is people just starting out on their recovery and postnatal journey, their, their home run. Head and chest is presented forwards. Heel strike is there, knees bending. So you can keep going for five, four, three, breathing regularly and stop. Happy? When you finish the exercising, if your heart rate's still quite high, you'll be able to feel it by your respiration rate. Yeah, so you're gonna be able to feel that. You just turned five, Sam. <laughs> so, when your heart rate's still going, after your little mini circuits, whatever you're training, Joe Wicks or however you're training, you give yourself a little bit of movement, it's gonna keep that blood flow going, as opposed to just driving along in sixth gear in the car and then putting a the handbrake on. So we're just gonna give ourselves that little bit of a wind down. All right, so we've done some squat throws, done a minute of press ups, I hope you remember how many you did. Uh, done a bit of lunges. This is a nice easy one. So I was clapping. Yeah. So, low impact, so if you're not leaving the ground. You can take your foot to the front of you and you can modify to here, if that's enough. I'm gonna start my minute. Just keep going with that pattern, heel dig. It's nice and simple, isn't it? Anything that gets your heart rate up, gets you breathless, as long as you can able, enable yourself to speak at the same time, we know that you're working comfortably. So we're just focused on getting you moving again. Getting you feeling energized, thinking about your posture, lengthening through the spine. Yeah, so these are the steady, these are the ready, sorry, ready. Steadies, steadies are doing a little bit more. Yeah, go there if you want. Yeah, people are really want to do a little bit more impact. This again, I would say six months after you've done some impact training, start to do a bit of a bounce. But I wouldn't offer you a bounce unless you've done a little bit of impact training already. Four, three, clap up if you can. And stop. Straight away this time, squat into your recovery. Happy? Push those hips forward. We're gonna come up into a little bit of balance here. Down. Up onto your toes, up onto your toes. So use an assist, support. Pick my head and chest up. Don't worry too much about the music, the rhythm. Weight is in the heels. Shift your weight backwards so you can feel your body working through the quadriceps. Leave out this little calf raise if it feels too much. It's all just practice moves. For what's to come over the next few weeks. Fabulous. Have a little march. All right, we're gonna do a bend to extend pattern. All right, grab a quick drink if you need one. I can't believe he's five, Sam. Jeanette, are you working out as well? <laughs> so here, This is the rope bands. When I'm referring to bands in my sessions, it means the long bands, not the round hoop bands. So for today, we'll go with this bend to extend pattern. So what we're gonna do is work on the back of the legs and I'm just gonna give you two sets of 12. Roll your shoulders back. See so if your posture, if you can line your shoulder up to come back on top of your hips. So if you're at a wall, you might want to try that later. See if you can stand at the wall, depending on the size of this area of your body, you'll have a gap at the wall, and then you'll have your, your shoulder blades on the wall, and you'll notice that you've got the curves in your spine. 
curve there, curve there, and then this, the curve here. And you'll just notice that you can just draw your shoulder blade back towards the wall. And when I do that, I'm aligning my posture. These muscles are really short for most human beings in the world, in the Western world, because of the way we live, you know that, because of the way we drive, we sit, we text, we call, uh, and then typically with uh, parents who are leaning forward a lot, feeding, changing, etc. Short muscles and then long muscles at the back. So to make these muscles shorter, we're asking the bodies to come into this position again. All right, so there's a little bit of effort there. So you've got tension, put some tension there, fists are facing towards the body. The base of support is about as wide as a mat. And then I'm gonna soften my knees, I'm gonna make this as easy as possible. So we're not working out in the gym now, we're working out postnatally. So this is a, a bend to extend pattern. So mums are doing this a lot, aren't they? You're not putting babies in the car now, so you've probably got a break from that. But you're still probably loading the, loading the washing machine, probably loading dishwashers, probably bending down to pick things up, passing things to small people. So this bend to extend pattern is really asking your back to do quite a lot of work. And what we tend to do is come into here and accentuate that posture that we're trying to avoid. You're coming down, I call it a little bit like a gorilla. So we're going to work on the hamstring, pulling us back up. Working on the lower back, working on the mid back, and then allowing myself this effort. I'm going to add in a row. So if you're pregnant, then you'll probably stay with this exercise here, okay? You probably won't be rowing. If you're going to row, let's just have a practice today. Let's go one, row, and up. Down. If you know what this is with a dumbbell, you know your form already, nah. you might want to work a bit harder here. Now what I'm asking you to do here is keep those shoulders back and down from the ears. And then I want you to work hard on creating what feels like a back cleavage. Put more effort into your back muscles than your hands. I'm going to do five more. Keeping a soft knee. Three. Squeeze the shoulder blade. Release. Tension through this material that you have in your hands. Two. One, then squat. This is 10 squats. Option, you can take a break and shake it and wiggle it here. Feel like you're doing too much? If you want to play with that pelvic floor, see if you can get it on, then off. On, then off. I want to talk about that as well. On, off. Let's do four, three, two, one. Bend, extend. Bend, extend. Now have a look at the position of your spine, in your mind. Neck is long. Squeeze, release. Four. Squeeze those shoulder blades, tension through the band for me. Are you breathing out of the effort? I'm going to do six more. I'm going to widen this belt on my to go wider. Take it where you need to. Three more. Nice and smooth action. Smooth and controlled. Squeeze. One more if you can. Give me my numbers. And relax. Shake everything off that feels tense. You don't want to be working into pain or discomfort notice how you're feeling. Notice if you're taking heavier breaths. Fabulous. All right, got a couple of more minutes. Um, those are the exercises. Oh, and there's one more. So let's try this one before we, before we wind down. Actually, I'll save that to next time. So I'll make sure you get a good stretch. <laughs> See if we can get a good little bit of a stretch in. Yeah, feeling okay? So you're going to learn the simple stretches, simple stretches. Most of you know these stretches already, we've got complete beginners here. Join me in learning, learning. If you're expert at stretches, do the revision, join in. So simple, straightforward. I'm going to use a chair for this one, so you can have your chair here. Yeah, you're going to 
press your heel into the earth behind you. You know that one? This is the knee at the front, weight's distributed 50-50. Now, I would recommend five full breaths in and out if you're not into counting numbers. You know, if you're not into counting how many seconds on each leg stretching is a very common question. Scientifically, you know, 15 seconds. You know, we're not developing a stretch, we're just trying to ease out tension. We stretch after our workout. We don't really need to stretch before our workout. We do dynamic mobility even when we're warming up and getting our body moving. We don't really need to stretch before our workout. A lot of people who do a lot of running do more athletic type work, but we're not athletes. So we just do a, a stretch when we finish, when our muscles are pliable, okay? One that needs balance is that one. So use some assist somewhere. And for this one, People think that they need to put their foot straight into their buttock, but they don't. You don't have to do that one. And you can keep your knees in line. We'll play around with that as we go on. This leg is not locked. It's supported. You can feel the way that affects the pelvis, can't you? When you lock, you tilt your pelvis forward. And when you release your knee there, you just let that little pelvis just soften, bounce, and just come into neutral. So I made some notes here, so I'm going to read these to you while I'm doing my quad stretch. So I'm trying my best on the online sessions to give you that boost of energy um, and build up your body awareness, as I said, these are my aims. I want to get you more involved with your breathing to connect to your movement as mums, because they need this regular movement um, every day, same, same kind of movement patterns. So the, the objective is to give you that boost to support your everyday life movement. Um, motor skills are developed naturally and um, you'll feel more responsive. Um, you'll just feel like your reaction um, will be more responsive. And of course, it will manage your, your, your posture, 100% manage your posture. So, hamstring stretches. Um, I wanna get on the floor to do a hamstring stretch, but if you know how to stretch with your buttocks, or your backside on a wall, or seated on a chair, take that stretch, or if you're sitting on a sofa, you know how to do your hamstring stretch, don't you? Like that. Lying down. Coming down to the floor, I'm gonna lunge backwards, bend my knee, tuck my toe under. I'm gonna swivel, just lie down on my back for you. I wanna show you a lying down ham stretch, string stretch. And then this is what I'm actually gonna talk about when we get into our next session, which is our chat. So just finishing you off here on the floor with a stretch. This leg, you can bend, I hope you can see me. And this leg doesn't have to be locked. It's better if it's not locked. And it's better if it's really comfortable. So use your shoelace. You could put the band around, but today you use your shoelace or your trousers. Support is not on the knee, it's above or below the knee. It gives you a bit of extra support if you need it. Just notice if your chin is coming up, and if it is, just, just gently just nod it down so you feel that length in your neck. And that's gonna, that's gonna give you a, a deeper stretch, and the fascia is connected, or the fascia is connected all the way through the body. So, you can do a little ankle roll if you like. Change over. I've kept my head on the floor the whole time. People who are used to stretching a little bit more uh, regularly, you can take your legs down, can't you? You know that one. So I'm doing the same thing I was doing before. I'm just letting my shoulders rest. My neck feels long. You can roll the ankle here. Don't go with that today. It's a nice short workout with some essentials. So for those of you who are just recovering from having a baby, we're still practicing rolling over and coming up. So that would be the best position for you to do. I would still consider doing that until you've had some proper core training. And that varies between person to person. So you'll know if, if you're not strong enough to be rocking up. You shouldn't really be rocking up unless you've got that, that core switch back on anyway. You want to treat yourself as if you're still heavily pregnant to, to some extent until you're really ready to do that. And it varies from person to person. I certainly wouldn't be just rocking up in the, um, like in the fourth trimester. I certainly wouldn't be encouraging people to rock up, uh, just give their backs more support, give your body a bit more support. So I'm going to stretch my chest by leaning my arms behind me. I think I'm on time. <laughs> this would be easier without the dog's face in mind. Yes, yes, I could see that would be a lot easier. I've seen some great videos of people exercising with a dog lately, have you? <laughs> Roll your shoulders and just ease out any niggles there. I'm sitting on my um, feet, but if that doesn't feel comfortable for you, you can come to standing or come onto your knees and just reach your arms behind. This in itself is a stretch. 
can already feel that. That in itself is, in it, is a stretch. You feel that opening up deep into the, the shoulders here. Palm rotating. And if you'd like to go a bit further, you can maybe clasp the hands. Again, it depends on your wrists, your, your shoulders. Bring yourself down, so the rib cage flares up, and then just tuck it back in a little bit. If you have a go-to, if you prefer that, do that. I'm going to roll my shoulders up, back, down, around. A little bit of rotation on the spine. Still opening deep into my chest. I can do that sitting down or in a chair. Follow around with the neck if it feels good, and then we're done. Let's do one big movement with a nice deep breath in. And an exhale. We're ready to, we're ready to finish off. So I'm going to see you in a few minutes. I'm going to see you in a few minutes on the other side. So if you have any questions, just come over. Um, and I'm going to do a little demonstration about abdominal um, control um, in there. So that might um, help some people. Um, I'll be doing that on the floor. So I'll see you in a minute. Well done today, everybody. Give yourself 10 points. And an elbow pump. <laughs> elbow pump the dog. <laughs> I'll see you very soon. Well done, guys.